Hello ladies and gents. Welcome back to our epic replay of the week and look what I found in my mailbox. Tier 10 match in the legendary, though often disliked IS-7 with an absolutely jaw-dropping 9000 damage, 9 kills, a 1 vs 5 finish and even a little twist at the end of it. There is only really one thing left to say, check this out. Alright, so here we are in the good old IS-7, this time around in a standard battle on stamps. Well, as far as the matchmaking goes, it certainly could be worse. Most of the teams are actually consisting of tier 9s, there are a couple of very unfortunate tier 8s and if I'm not mistaken that's actually a tier 7 tank destroyer in a failed platoon of the enemy team. <laughs> Job well done. Alright, so really the IS-7 should be in its element here. It's also quite a fast machine, so we are going to bring it here on the eastern front. Which is not a bad decision, there is only one enemy artillery we have to be worried about. So there is no reason to go and hug the rocks on the western side. Now, something that has to be said right up front is, if you notice the ammo layout, that's quite a lot of APCR in this tank. Now, the standard rounds are not bad. 250mm of average penetration and 490 average damage. Certainly you have to bring a reasonable amount if you are going to play a tier 10s because there are a lot of machines out there that if you want to be competitive against them you have to fire some premium rounds. Although that amount might be a little bit of overkill, but then again, what do I know? Oh, by the way, we just said hello to that poor tier 7 on the other side. Be as it may, we are starting with our standard rounds and look at the amount of work we are able to do with them. Now that was some very aggressive play, both from the Skoda T50 and also from the STB-1. And I don't know what the plan for this new 50 was, but that's a lot of high tier tanks <laughs> very much dead right in the beginning of the match. Going for the cupola shot there on the BK, which is probably a little bit wishful thinking. But then we are moving up to be a little more, a little bit more up close and personal with the IS-7, where really is a position where this machine just shines. Now this terrain here will be perfect for going cool down, and that's where the IS-7 is just so damn powerful. Nice little shot there with the standard round into the cupola of the VK. However, this is an even tougher target than the VK itself. Type 4 heavy. Man, that thing can be dangerous. Now we are just about to fire our last AP round, and well, that's the perfect target for it. Tier 7 tank destroyer, goodbye. Better tank selection next time. And now we are starting to fire those dirty, dirty APCR shells. Although it has to be said, with those APCRs, we have 303 uh, millimeters of average penetration. And that means there is still a fairly good chance that uh, we can low roll and not penetrate the Type 4 heavy. Like that one. Now, the places where to shoot that beast is either the lower plate the mid plate, the cheeks of the turret, or the cupola, all of which have about 250 mm of uh, armor. So with the regular AP shells it really would be a 50-50 if we're going through them. With the uh, APCR, well, as you can see, we can still very much low roll. Come on, we are wasting our time here. We need to get rid of this Type 4 Heavy as soon as possible. It certainly is not not giving up its life easily, and unfortunately we are being blocked by the tier 10 tank destroyer from behind, which is not ideal. However, these guys are being squeezed in, so it really is only a matter of time. Hopefully, we can make short work of them though, because the other side is just about to collapse. Alright, one more good shot into the VK, and he is not long for this bird. And indeed he is out. Finally a penetrating hit into the lower plate of the Type 4 Heavy, and now it's basically just time to go in and serve this guy down. Not a moment too soon, because the other side is now completely out of order. 
So now it's a case of who will stir through the enemy scab first. We might be in a bit of trouble if they are going for our cap. But we have to see, maybe they are coming back to defend because, well, they have a minimap as well. We pretty much just won each of our sides. Well, that is a juicy target. And it has to be said, a lot of what's left on the enemy team is rather squishy, so these APCR shells are a little bit of overkill, even though the higher shell uh, velocity means that it will be easier to snapshot in with them. Which certainly will happen a couple of times throughout the replay, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. So right now, the battle is fairly even. It was 8 to 8. We are now down by a single tank. It's not too bad. Both teams have two top tier tanks. So it's really a 50-50 who will come out of top. But unfortunately, the Waffentrager just did pull back and blew. That's the Gorilla. And he is focusing on someone else, unfortunately taking out the E50. Let's see if we can find somebody here. Oh, side of the E75. It's no problem to go through. So it seems the enemies pretty much decided to stay in, in position in this corner of the map and defend from here. It's not a bad call. We have to be really, really careful. There is a lot of open ground around the enemy cap. And if you drive out there, you will just be shot to smithereens in seconds. Talking about being shot, that Lula 15 certainly didn't realize the threat that was coming up on the other side of the tracks, even though we were spotted, so... Well, that's certainly his fault. And we are very happy to punish him. <laughs> really, don't need the APCR penetration for that guy. Although it would be really nice not to get shot by him. Come on! Oh, he was not reloaded. A little bit too late there, my friend. Interestingly enough, the T-54 actually decides not to come after us, but we can't really just go up there and poke that ridge because there is a Waffentrager and an E-75 really looking forward to get a shot into us, as is the artillery. Hot damn. That was a luckily avoided shot. Now we bounced there, if I'm not mistaken, 750 damage from the Waffentrager, so that means he is using the Derpier gun. Which is interesting news, that's actually good work in our favor. Unless he's using premium shells. Our armor should be working out quite nicely against that, if we are careful. Uh, this is a pretty tricky situation in the meantime. Unfortunately, we are completely separated from the E75. And it seems the TVP on the enemy team, who is by the way a really good player and already on 6 skills, has realized that, so probably what they will do is they will just single out the E75, and that will leave the more uh, trickier target for them, us in the IS-7, completely alone. And indeed, there they go, T-54, and probably, yep, TVP there as well. That means, unfortunately, the E75 is not long for this world. Oh, even the Scorpion did turn up there. Now that means that the Waffentrager is pretty much alone here, so let's go and kill him. By the way, we are now in a 1 vs 5. Oh, there we go. <laughs> That's one very important gun out of the game. And now our chances are a lot better in a 1 vs 4. Still, our work is cut out for us. Now that shot right there, I'm pretty sure that was a misclick. Especially as now we only have 5 shells left and we have 4 tanks on the enemy team. Well, 2 tanks, a tank destroyer and an artillery. So, yeah, this could really come back and bite us in the ass. So let's make sure we don't waste any more shells. Oh, there is a scorpion in the open. Bit of a snapshot there, not fully aimed yet, but we managed to take him down and that's another dangerous gun out of the game and whoa! There is the T-54, oh come on, we bounce a shell from the TVP, a shell from the T-54, whoa, that was tricky. Now TVP is retreating and, oh, yeah. That's when the artillery slam dunks a shell into us for 900 damage, 
taking us down to probably about a third of our hit points. Now, uh, you really didn't need that. And we also used our repair kit previously to, to repair our tracks. So we will be ammo wrecked for the rest of the game, with our three shells remaining for two enemies. Probably it would have been better to stay there a little bit more behind that rock, because we were still spotted and the artillery was certainly aiming on us. But hey, in the heat of the battle, probably he was expecting the TVP to come back. He only fired three shells, I think, so didn't really want to sit there in the open. Unfortunately, artillery punished us hard. Now it's a really tricky question, what do you do in this situation? I mean, the enemy cap is right there, but at the same time the TVP could very very easily just keep spotting us for the artillery. And we already did see what kind of effect an M3355 has on the IS-7's hit points. Now the TVP certainly has the advantage here, we are not a slow tank, but he's a lot more mobile. And if he can manage to come up on our sides and or rear, we will be in a hell of a lot of trouble. He basically very easily can clip us at this stage. And for a TVP that doesn't take more than a couple of seconds. And we are ammo wrecked. Now luckily, the TVP is a one-shot kill. So an artillery probably is on full health, but we would very easily one shot him as well. We have a 490 alpha damage after all. Now we come here out in the open seeing if the, if anybody is uh, is in the middle of the map, we don't get spotted. This by the way was a little bit cheeky for us to come here. If somebody would be in a position, we would have been sitting ducks there, but we got away with it. So now it's time to find these guys. Now artillery was heading in this direction and oh we get spotted. Question is where are they? Well, they can be either on the rocks right in front of us, in which case we are in a worst possible um, position right now, or they could be to the right of us. It's really anybody's guess at this stage, but we are not getting shot from right now. Oh, there is the artillery. Holy cow, that means we were in the worst possible position up until now, and oh my god, that load, old man. That means we have to waste another shell for the artillery, leaving him on two hit points. That was really unfortunate. So that means we have two shells remaining for two enemies. And luckily the TVP just doesn't show itself. We were ammo wrecked, so that was the perfect opportunity for him to come and get us. And we have still plenty of time to get to the artillery and take him out, which is great. But it's really surprising that the TVP did not punish us for it. So where the hell is that guy? Maybe he was going back around to completely on the other side of the map? Be as it may, we have one shell remaining. We really have to make this one work. Pretty sure the TVP is now coming to get us though and... Oh Jesus, he is actually behind us. Oh, this is not good. Oh, oh look at the snapshot. Last shell into the TVP. That was truly something. Yes, yes, I know, I know. That was certainly a lot of APCR, but damn, this was still an absolutely ridiculous game. Ace Tanker, that very rare Fadins medal for winning the match with your last shell, a Kolobanovs medal at tier 10, Redley Walters with 9 kills, Steel Wall, High Caliber, and of course a Top Gun. Most impressive. Now, looking at the team results, our hero did actually more damage single-handedly than two-thirds of his team combined, though it has to be said that that enemy TVP had a pretty good game as well, at least right until the end. Last but not least, from all those 30 rounds we fired, we hit 28 of them actually, but penetrated only 23. That Type 4 Heavy certainly didn't want to die easy on us. At the same time, we also managed to deflect 12 out of the 16 direct hits received, negating almost 5,000 damage ourselves. Alright, this was then our truly epic IS-7 gameplay, courtesy of DJ Anderson. Many thanks for sending in this game, and massive congratulations to an absolutely fantastic result. This was truly a special one. I hope you guys had just as much fun watching it as I did, and if so, thanks a lot for considering giving this a like or sharing it. 
Tomorrow we will continue with a funny moment special looking at some of your epic World of Tanks console and Blitz moments. And then on Thursday we will ace another one of my favorites together, the T20 Medium. Thank you very much for watching everyone, and I look forward to seeing you again in one of the next videos.